good morning friends today we will learn about the another part of the immunology section that is the acquired immunity as we have learned in the previous lecture about what is immunity and what are the different type of immunity that is the innate and the acquired immunity so today we will learn about the acquired immunity what is uh, what is the meaning of this acquired immunity how we develop it what are the components of it and how it works so what is this acquired immunity as the name suggests that is the immunity which has been acquired in the lifetime so it is defined as the resistance against the infecting foreign substance that an individual acquires or adapts during the course of his life so as we have learned in the past previous lecture that is the innate immunity with the child having the since birth but this is being acquired in the life course that is the course of his life now what are the properties of this acquired immunity that is there are certain mediators which are playing role in the acquired immunity so the important mediator which plays the most important role they are the b and t cells so t cells and b cells they are the chief mediators and uh, what these mediators play that is the uh, whenever any foreign substance enters your body so these t cells get activated and these t cell will activate either they become the cytotoxic t cells or they become the helper t cells now these helper t cells activate the b cells and these b cells become the plasma cells and the antibodies will be formed or they are cytotoxic t cells so they can directly kill the any foreign uh, a microorganism now the second mediator which plays role that is the classical complement pathway so this complement pathway when we talk of alternate complement pathway that plays a role in the innate immunity there is the classical complement pathway plays a role in the acquired immunity then another are the mediator are the antigen presenting cells so they also play important role in the acquired immunity and certain cytokines are there so these are the mediators which will bring about this acquired immunity now this acquired immunity uh, uh, like these are the certain how it works that is the response occurs in days so it's not like the innate immunity in which already uh, they don't need any exposure pre exposure for action they are present since birth but this immunity as the person acquires in his lifetime so first there will be exposure of this any uh, foreign microorganism occurs and slowly slowly uh, our uh, these immune cells they become uh, activated then they are certain memory cells so they will remember it so the response will occur in day and also the proportion of the response is also differ depending upon it is a primary exposure or it is a second time it is exposing so it is primary immune response or it is a secondary immune response so a second point that it requires the prior microbial exposure so it will not act directly they need some prior exposure so that your t cells and b cell they get sensitized they are ready they have memory cells which will remember it and so next time they will have the full effect now the action is also specific like if you have got any infection suppose like there is a tuberculosis bacteria has entered our body and so the antibodies will be formed that will be against the tuberculosis bacteria only so the action will be specific whereas in case of the innate immunity like we have the natural killer cells which have a uh, action against the cancer cells or the tumor cells so the that action or the virus uh, they also act against the viruses so that is non specific they will not they, that will not be a fixed to any infection but in case of the acquired immunity the action will be specific the immunity will be against only that pathogen which has been entered or exposure has taken place then the memory is also present as their memory cells are there so second time when this pathogen will come again then your immune system will work in much better way and it will recognize and the action will be much faster diversity is wide and the host cell so they usually act through the receptor interaction takes place so host cell receptors are there now what are the different types of acquired immunity so one is the active and passive immunity on that basis they have been differentiated and second is the artificial and the natural immunity 
Artificially means some pathogen has been introduced artificial manner and natural means that is uh, directly the infection has occurred and due to which your immune system get activated. Now comes to the active immunity. So what is the active immunity? That means the resistance have been developed by an individual towards an antigenic stimulus and that is there has been an active role of your immune system. So that you will say active immunity means either the pathogen has been introduced artificially or uh, the person has got the infection but your immune system is working that means it's uh, active immunity. Now active immunity is of two type one is the natural another is the artificial as I already told you natural active immunity means that some exposure has been taken place to any microorganism. So your immune system will get activated and it will result in formation of certain uh, antibodies. In artificial active immunity means some pathogen has been introduced uh, artificially like we do in case of the vaccination where we introduce some part of the pathogen or either it has been killed or it has been weakened that is attenuated. So by that means if your immune system is getting activated that is a, but in both the uh, both the cases your immune system is working therefore we are saying active immunity that means your immune system is playing an active role. Now depending upon uh, the different type of pathogen the immunity also depends whether it will be lifelong or whether the effect will be short term. So uh, for some pathogens like either you have one uh, natural infection or some vaccination has been given the immunity will be lifelong like in case of chicken pox, small pox, measles. So in these cases whether it is a natural or it is artificially induced but the immunity is lifelong. Then there are certain pathogens where we are having only short duration immunity like in case of the typhoid vaccines. We are giving the typhoid vaccine so it has only 2 to 4 years there is immunity then you need the booster doses. Then there is another term that is known as the permunition or the concomitant immunity that means the immunity is present as long as the pathogen is present in your body. Like you have an infection of malaria or this um, spirochete that is a syphilis. So the immunity is as long as the pathogen is present in your body and again once the, this pathogen is out, so your immunity will also not work and you can be vulnerable to another infection. Then there is the, some pathogen where uh, whether the pathogen is present in your body or not, there is no active immunity at all. So the infection is also not giving any protection to its reinfection like in case of the Haemophilus duperi. Now, as we said that the uh, two type of immune response has been seen whenever there is any entry of the microorganism or any foreign pathogen. So one is the primary immune response and another is the secondary immune response. So in case of the primary immune response, there is a latent or the lag period. So uh, initially when the pathogen enters in your body, your body tries to understand it. At that time, this uh, antigen presentation and everything uh, the pre steps are going on so it requires some time to respond to this pathogen so that is a latent or lag period after that uh, some processing of this pathogen has been taken place then your uh, these um, B cell, uh, sorry T cells they will get differentiated so that will take time so that is a lag period then once the pre uh, primary steps has been taken place then your B cell and T cell get activated and as I have already told you when this antigen presentation has been done so this T cells they will become either the helper T cell or the cytotoxic T cells. Helper T cells will uh, directly activate the B cells and they will become the plasma cells and plasma cell means now they can secrete the antibodies or these affected T cells they can be cytotoxic T cells so they can directly lies the cells. Then certain part of this T cell and B cell have the memory cells. So their purpose is that they will retain the memory of this pathogen. So then next time when the pathogen again enters the same pathogen. 
so these cells will immediately get activated so they don't need all the uh, preliminary steps so here the when the second time the infection occur that is a second immune response so there will be no lag period and immediately your body will start working and producing the antibodies then comes the antibody surge so in antibody surge that is the activated b cells they are producing the antibodies or cytotoxic cells they are killing it initially the antibody level is slow as we have all know that initially the igm antibodies produced that will take some uh, time to be appear in the serum and it will be maintained for uh, for us uh, some period and then will it will start falling then the igg antibody that can start forming so finally a low titer of the baseline antibody will be maintained in the serum so this you can see what is the primary immune response that may first time the exposure to the pathogen occur so there is a lag phase then the antibody start rising that is the igm antibody then it will start falling and a very low level of antibodies will be maintained in the after that period and if the second time exposure to occur then the uh, very high titer of igg antibody will form and that will be maintained so this igg antibody that will be maintained in the at a high titer so in second immune response the same antigen exposure is occurring subsequently and there are latent period negative phase and the antibody surge so uh, this latent period is almost not present in case of second immune response because the memory cells are present so that uh, latent or lag period is present in the primary immune response negative phase is present as some uh, as i have told you that in primary immune response there is a, a low level of igm antibody remains so that antibody will bind to the uh, this second time antigen present that is the second time infection present so this antigen and antibody will form the complex so suddenly this antibody level that is the previous antibody level will fall down now the role of the secondary antibody that is the igg so that will occur um, starting forming in the body and now this antibody surge will be seen now the passive immunity in case of passive immunity that is your immune system is playing a passive role that means it's not active so the antibodies are already been formed they are being ready made and they have been supplied to the person so they are the ready made form and there is no participation of the host immune system now it is of two type one is the natural passive immunity one is the natural passive immunity and another is the artificial passive immunity so in natural that means the antibody from mother to child that is the antibody has been prepared in the mother and that can cross uh, cross the placenta and reach to the fetus so that is a natural way in case of artificial passive immunity that means artificially the antibody has been synthesized in some other person or in some other animals and these immunoglobulins being transferred to the another person who is in the need of this immunoglobulin there are certain example of artificial passive immunity like in case of the rabies where there is a risk of uh, infection of this rabies infection immunoglobulins are given like in case of tetanus immunoglobulin like in case of hepatitis b infection so these are the very good examples where these immunoglobulins are being given they are very costly and also these uh, immunoglobulins are being available only uh, for very few infections so where they can be emergency condition and where we need it immediately now what is the difference between the primary and the secondary immune response so uh, as we have already learned that in case of the primary immune response the immune response is against the primary antigenic channel in secondary it is the second time the antigen has entered the response is slow and sluggish and it is for a very short duration in case of primary exposure in case of secondary exposure the action will be prompt it will be a powerful and prolonged action will be seen in case of the second time exposure the lag period is longer in case of the primary exposure and it's almost 
absent or very short that is 1 to 3 days in case of secondary exposure then antibody produced in low titer in case of primary exposure and will be of igm type in secondary the anti production will be high titer and it will be igg antibodies are more specific in case of primary immune response they are less specific in secondary immune response then come what is the difference between the active and passive immunity i think it must be clear to all of you that is in active uh, your immune system is playing active role in passive uh, you have received passively the antibodies in active it has been induced either by the infection or by the vaccination in passive you have already learned both the example as from mother to fetus or the ready made antibody transfer then in active immunity it is a long lasting because your body is uh, forming it in passive immunity it lasts only for a very short time lag period is present in case of active immunity as your immune system will get activated then it will produce when in passive because it is a ready made form so there is no lag period memory is present in active immunity when in passive there is no memory booster doses are needed in active immunity and in passive subsequent doses are less effective now uh, this innate and acquired immunity they are not all together totally different all they uh, some of the components are there common and both the immunity they work together how they work together like macrophages and the dendritic cells which are the component of the innate immunity they play an important role in the acquired immunity as we have learned that in case of the acquired immunity uh, once there is an antigen presentation to the b cell and to the t cell mainly the t cell then only these affected t cells will become and they will then uh, have the cytotoxic or helper or the activation of b cell now these macrophages and dendritic cell they are the member of innate immunity they are not the member of acquired immunity so they both are doing the antigen presentation which is the key role of the acquired immunity so that means the acquired immunity is also depend upon the innate immunity then another is the antibody dependent cell cytotoxicity so in this case also the natural killer cells which are playing uh, which is a part of innate immunity so this natural killer cells they are playing the role with the help of the antibodies so here the innate immunity is taking the help of the acquired immunity so that is how they both are uh, with each other and they are helping each other then complement system so here we also know alternate and uh, alternate and the classical complement pathways both are dependent when you will learn about the complement pathway there is a common pathway so uh, like in alternate complement pathway is playing role in innate whereas the another part of the complement pathway that is the classical is playing role in the acquired immunity and then the cytokine so there are certain cytokines of the innate immunity which activate the acquired immunity so they both are interconnected they are both are dependent on each other now then there are different type of immunity also that is one is the local immunity local immunity that is immunity at the level of the mucosal surface like uh, being seen in the intestinal or in the respiratory mucosa or in the genital urinary mucosa so uh, there is only a single type of antibody that is a secretory iga antibody which plays the role in the local immunity and this immunity is either by the uh, natural infection of this pathogen or by the live vaccination as we give in the polio virus that is a opv and it is never being produced by any the killed vaccine so either it is by natural infection or by the live vaccination then another immunity is the herd immunity that is uh, overall immunity of a community towards a pathogen so whenever um, like we have tried we have eradicated this uh, polio infection so there uh, this herd immunity has played a very important role what are the important element of the herd immunity that is the occurrence of the clinical and subclinical cases in the herd ongoing immunization program and the type of the population involved so we have seen that vaccination uh, effective vaccination has played an important role in the herd immunity and most important example of the herd immunity has been seen in the polio infection only as this opv vaccine which is capable of giving this herd immunity so that has been used to replace uh, the wild polio virus so this vaccine virus has replaced the wild polio virus so that has played an immense role 
in eradicating this polio infection in our country then uh, adaptive immunity so this being asked because sometimes we get confused with adaptive immunity and the adaptive means is the acquired immunity but adaptive immunity is different and that is a very favorite question of the examiner what is adaptive immunity so adaptive it is a special type of cell mediated immunity which have been followed which develop following the injection of the immunological competent t lymphocyte means uh, these competent t lymphocytes are being injected that is known as a transfer factor and that has been seen it is being useful for treatment then in the person is having the cell mediated immunity is low that is being seen in case of the lepromatous leprosy where your t cells or the cell mediated immunity is very poor so there you can give uh, this injection of the competent t lymphocyte that is the adaptive immunity so that's all about the acquired immunity and you must have learned all the details what are needed for the acquired immunity if you have any doubt regarding this topic or in the previous topic that is the innate immunity you can ask me in the comment section please share it with your friends so that they will also be benefited with this topic thank you